The NFL supports people of interest, but that doesn't mean that people of interest supports the NFL and its policies, okay? Unicorns have long been a fascination of ancient civilizations and six-year-old girls alike, despite not being real. Well, my next guest has a message of hope for those little girls in ancient civilizations. Unicorns are real. Dr. Karina Potts claims she has been tracking unicorns in the forest of Scotland for many years now. However, here comes the bad news. According to Dr. Potts, the reason no one ever sees unicorns because they're being hunted illegally by dark wizards who use their blood for black market mortality potions and their hair for wands. Dr. Potts is now trying to raise awareness for the issue and save the unicorns. Dr. Karina Potts, Paul. Oh, thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, this is just such a major issue, and people have no idea that it's even out there. They're out there purchasing these things, and they don't realize what the impact is on the population. Right. Now, um, you uh, have yet to proper proof of these uh, <laughs> unicorns. Um, I guess the, the first one, how can you prove that right now, I suppose? <laughs> Back when I was a child, uh, just growing up in, in the backwoods of Berks County, running through the farmland with my best friend at my side, we would actually track unicorns ourselves. Oh. There were these little tiny roof marks in fields, and I don't know what else could have made them in Pennsylvania other than unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what led you to Scotland? Well, the Scottish have a very strong belief and respect for the unicorn. Um, they, their children are raised in schools, and they actually do the Pledge of the Unicorn each morning. <laughs> start the day with that. And so they've grown, and they have an appreciation for it. And, and it's in their blood, too. <laughs> Not the unicorn blood. Uh, actually, it, the unicorn blood was injected into early Scottish societies, and then it carried on genetically. Oh. Now, now I've read in your research that unicorn blood uh, is cursed. The people who kill the unicorns do become cursed. Is that carrying through the Scottish bloodlines? Yes. Uh, if you are cursed, you are shunned by the society. So um, you actually, after you're, you have a, a, an opportunity to go through Romspringer. Oh. And then if you don't pass it through Romspringer, and then you go and you purchase a unicorn object mm -hmm. that was poached, then you were shunned. Slash, slash, you know, cursed. <laughs> it's, it's, they're kind of, the words are interchangeable. Oh, it's like sort of a, it's, it's hard to understand the Scottish people. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is actually, um, and that's one of, one of my first eyewitnesses. It took me quite a while to really decipher what he was talking about, oh. but he was one of the best eyewitnesses of the unicorn that I found to date. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, how, how so? Who's elaborate? Uh, well, his name was uh, Joseph Brigadoon. Okay. <laughs> and he was walking in the highlands of Scotland, and these mists appeared, and all of a sudden this town appeared, and they, they sang songs with him, and the songs were about a unicorn. One traipsed through the village, and then the mists were away, and he was in New York City. <laughs> it was like he was brought to my door, even though, you know, we're a little distance from here, right. but it was like he was brought to my door just to tell me, and I, I feel like this was something that I was destined to do. Uh, so, so what happened to Mr. Brady? Um, he actually he fell in love with the lass, and he <laughs> went back, and um, it, it's just the funniest thing that the town just appeared again, and like that, they probably had the unicorn at their wedding. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it, I mean, it was very exciting for him. It's just it's troublesome for you to lose my eyewitness. Right. So, yeah, you know, I, right now I just have to rely on those little clothing booth yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you, you talked about dark wizards, you know, and the and sort of the wizard black market. Have, have you, have you uh, gone there? Have you gone to those places and you've been tracking them down? I have. Um, the, one, the worst place that you can go actually is Diagon Alley. <laughs> in, in the streets of London, you would, ne you would never even know it's there. Only the people who are in this really tight network of poachers know where these places are. Oh, okay. um, you actually have to pretend like you're walking into a wall and then poof, you're there and there are just all these wands. 
um, you can actually see unicorn horns that were just cut off and are just sitting in piles. It's, it's really disturbing, and uh, a lot of times they just leave the unicorn without its horn dying. And, you know, I've tried to find the bodies, but unfortunately, again, you know, they eluded me. And, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, now I, I have heard that uh, is it true that uh, but it's at least believe that unicorn horns are, are something that for these yeah, the wrong, uh, or the fertility. Uh, if some people believe that, but, and reality yeah, they're just made of keratin. Oh. Yeah, they're made of the same thing <laughs> as your fingernails. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's just this false belief. So the best way to target it really is just to go to the source and find the consumers of the project, project and then talk to them and try to work things out. So now, what can we do to save the unicorns here at home? Oh, well, um, there are actually there are units that, call, that are called unicorn protection units okay. that we sponsor up in uh, in Scotland, kind of close to where we do the piers. Sure. And, um, and we actually arm people to protect them and shoot any potential poachers. Um, we actually we accidentally shot a sheep herder, but um, we. We gave his, no, he wasn't. He just was trying to hurt his sheep, but no. uh, <laughs> we, we gave him some. Just like that. Sure. Um, and now, I, 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 uh, you have fundraisers as well? For oh, we do. Uh, we have a fundraiser that's called Bowling for Unicorns. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, basically, if you knock down all 10 pins, you have saved you. <laughs> yes, just like when you clap your hands to say tinker now, yes. you say you want to be a strike. So, you know, really, you need to strike out coaching, you know? Wow, so. What about a spare? Is that um, a spare? A spare, that... you have saved a wounded uniform. Uh -huh. But it's not like we're still a problem also. Uh, they probably will have much to death just because we can't find them in time. <laughs> but it's better. I feel like it's better than just a, you know. Right, it's better work. I swear, is there a penalty for gutter balls? Uh, you know, we <laughs> kick those people out because we don't need the population to dwindle anymore um, at this point. Um, so we really only accept good boulders at our fundraisers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everyone's welcome. We'll give you a shot. You know? Or or we'll just put the bumpers. In oh, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> Safe for yeah. unicorns. Yeah, it's a good wildlife management technique. Oh, that's <laughs> Now, um, you know, we've talked about Scotland, you, you clearly you, you track some of the birds down. Where, where, where are some other locations of birds? Uh, there are some places in the Fairmount Park really? that they can find them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's this cave up in Roxborough, and uh, I, I decided to overnight there, and I, I heard these mystical voices that were, were outside of the cave, and they might have been adventure out because I was afraid that the magicalness would go away if, if my whole soul went in there. Sure. But um, I just know it had to be unicorns. <laughs> unicorns can talk? They can when they're in a cave. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that they did not know that. Yeah. What were they talking about? My, my um, they said that they were very sorry that they had only picked up a six pack of Miller and that they wanted to go back and get something better, like maybe some new one. And they were smoking too, which I, which I hadn't really thought of myself. Uh, but you know, maybe it's it's to ward off the nerves of constantly being pursued by poachers. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, uh, thank you so much for, for telling us all about this. Um, do you have any, I guess, final words? You know, what, what would be uh, if people could go out right now? One thing to help people, what would it be? You just have to. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Actual support for people of interest is brought to you by Philly Improv Theater, Philly's home for comedy. In addition to shows every week of the year, FIT offers classes in improv, sketch, and stand up. For more information, visit phillyimprovtheater.com.